And what is up, folks? We're back for episode seven here of Power Book Two, uh, entitled Sex Week, where this was an episode of a bunch of people not answering their phone calls, minimum sex, and cane snitching. <laughs> and uh, of course, because I could not stop start the show without saying, and Jabari just being a bitch ass nigga the entire fucking show. That oh, dude is wild. Episode. And I just, I, for anybody who by any means is still rooting for that guy, I, please jump in the comments. And let me know what are you saying that I'm not? Because that dude is just, he, he, he is something. But um, before we get started, Uncle Lou, what's going on, brother? Hey, nothing much, man. Nothing much. This is ah, just just interested to see them bringing up this book and then to see certain people act like punks based <laughs> off of this book. It's amazing to me, Joe. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Starting off this episode, we got to see Kane running with the GTG and he was stealing from the church who also steals from people. So I was like, oh, look, Kane playing Robin Hood off break, but <laughs> it didn't take long for him to get the snitching and not being reliable. But let's let's talk about Kane for a second. Now, we've seen Kane really got put in the check last week. Uh, mm -hmm. And then this week, we kind of seen Kane kind of be, in other words, disbanded by both of his parents. So he went out on his own thinking he's going to put in work on the street. He got snatched up after he already said the streets was hot. Like, and he like, he didn't even like the thing about it is that you would think Kane is street smart to not have just walked to his car or normally and not see a car. Luckily, he didn't get shot up, but like he got picked yeah, up. He was clear that car was right there the whole damn time. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't, like, and it was a fed. Like it looked dead obvious. Like he should have peeped that the way like he should operate. He should have definitely peeped that. Getting to the getting picked up not being able to make the drop um, and then hitting up Ramirez to help him get out of jail, snitching to Ramirez about the whole thing, his whole hatred for Tariq, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing I really want to kind of focus on here is with all this happening, Kane lit up when Diana came to look for him and was like, yo, we need you because, you know, DC Joe is coming. That's usually your thing in handling, you know, the cash, the drop in exchange for the product. Mm -hmm. and it was all love and good because he found, you know, that's the thing they trust him with. He's the muscle. He's not the brain, obviously. And when it came down to him doing his duty, he was ready to like let bygones be got bygones. All the stuff that happened in last week's episode, he's ready to just say, you know what? As long as I'm needed, as long as I got my purpose, then it's all good. And that's where he lit up at. So something, as we've been saying this entire season, is that mm -hmm. Kane has his role, but his thing is his thing. And when he feels needed, when he feels like there's a, a chance for him to kind of get a step up in the hierarchy, he's always going to, you know, take that opportunity. But in fact, he shot himself in the foot with this. <laughs> and we see Tariq rose to the occasion. Now we're seeing him kind of fizzle. And again, him telling Ramirez that they're, they're being X out of the plan and Tariq is the issue and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Kane just came off as a complete snitch. He started off as Robin Hood all the way until being a snitch. You keep, so. on, you keep on saying Robin Hood like he was giving that money to the poor. That money was going to the poor. <laughs> <laughs> his, fellow, his fellow robber had on a bedazzled ski mask. Dude, like, yeah. Come on, son. Come on. Come on. Come these on. Are the, these are the most I don't want to be hot hot dudes i've ever seen hey, in my life hey, it makes <laughs> me literally the streets is hot but yeah of course look how y'all hey, walking didn't around he, didn't, didn't he take off his glove <laughs> before grabbing the money what sense does that make i don't yeah. need to take my glove off i get this episode will help show just how um immature he is and yeah it shows a side that lorenzo automatically sees in him that led to that earlier conversation in the season when he said, no, it's Drew. It's not him. He's yeah. hot-headed. Like, this whole episode was him being hot-headed. Him reacting to everything and not fully thinking about how did he get himself in that situation. So then when Diana came to him, it made him feel wanted again. Like, he needs Mo Monet to, like, need him. But not yeah. understanding, like, that's not the case anymore. Like you burned a bridge and it's hard for you to repair that bridge if you're not opening your mouth. Exactly. And this whole episode was him not opening his mouth until he got in trouble and his jealousy came back up again. 
And there he him and Jabari running their mouths about Tariq the entire <laughs> episode. <laughs> like they, they might as well just name this at this point, uh Tariq on the run. I will book two Tariq on the run. <laughs> Everybody is turning against Tariq at this point. And this is the first time they're doing it, and we're looking like the kid is actually innocent <laughs> of almost everything that y'all trying to blame on him. <laughs> it, it was it was just crazy to see Kane in that light, but it was necessary to see his character in that light. Yeah. So him being extremely vulnerable and feeling that way. Because, he again, at the beginning with the first shots of the episode, that's him attempting to regain the tough guy image that his father took away from him yeah. at the end of last episode. Because mm-hmm. other than that, what is really the point of going to rob a church? Yeah, not at all. He's supposed to be a street dude. He, you know that's not good money. That's not good business. You don't rob churches. Out yeah. of all things, you don't rob churches. Yeah, I mean, and you never see that, actually, because they are always at some point in, in the business, whether it's the, the guns being ran through. I mean, that's what Tommy was doing, obviously, hey, with the church. Hey, so, that's what I said. You don't, that's why you don't rob churches. Yeah. Churches yeah. are a beautiful way to clean money if you need it to clean money. But you don't yeah. rob the church with a brother with a bedazzled ski mask on. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody in the comments to tell us that that's like a a, a trend. A McQueen, because that's what I came on thinking. Like that looks like either Alexander McQueen, like ski mask joint, or I don't, or maybe a Virgil ski mask. Like somebody's gonna tell us like that man. That that mask caused. Eighteen thousand dollars, some way, stupid, way deeper than my pockets, whatever it's, it is, it's, it's, way deeper than whoever it is robbing a church's <laughs> pocket should be. <laughs> like I have but, never seen someone be so undercoverly loud ever, Joe. You must wear this wore yellow ski mask and be like, "Hey, it's it's me." Yeah, it's de- <laughs> it's definitely the uh, the mint coat at the uh, front of the Tyson fight. Hey, uh, hey, <laughs> it's, it's the straight, Frank, straight Frank Lucas thing right there. <laughs> yeah. Joe. So, but I mean, yeah, and 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 the message I definitely want to get over to our our listeners is that like we're what we're noticing is is the same thing where Kane wants to instate his irrelevance within the family is in in the order of operations his his hierarchy is that mm-hmm. they don't need Tariq he's the man that can be trusted a one day he can rule the family and everything that he's doing to try to prove that has only been giving ammunition towards Tariq. And Tariq ain't really even fetching for this. It's yep. Kane putting it up on a platter for him. And he's just doing what he has to do. Tariq literally did nothing this episode, but more or less show how much he is like his father. And he didn't have to do anything because that was always what Tommy's mission was. And you never seen them trying to battle who was the tr- who was the most toughest on the street or who was the better businessman. Everyone had their role. We see Kane is just trying to just be all over the place. He wants to be every single thing. And he's failing miser- miserably. He, he wants what, to be the smarts. He wants to be the muscle. He wants to be everything. And yeah. he can't. Yeah. He can't be everything. Yeah. He, the, the the defiant son, the, the the leader of the house, the new leader of the organization, the muscle, the hothead, like everything. Like it's it's crazy. But like I gotta be honest, like and to put into perspective, because like I know uh, when it comes to these shows, people like to say who they like and who they don't like. The character Kane has been way more intriguing than I ever thought it was going to be. I literally thought this was just going to be some dude <laughs> coming out with all the latest fashion lines each and every episode and just being the shooter. But like we're literally are seeing um the the development of this character throughout this episode of just truly, you know, on display who he really is, of, of somebody that you think was going to go one way and absolutely self-detonating in the other direction. So, and he was just one been- person it's it's a person at the beginning of the show we question why wasn't he the second and as the show goes on we cl- they're un- unraveling to us why he can't be the second yeah and let's talk about Drew real quick now we didn't get Drew at all this episode but the one scene we did ice cold Drew proved that he can step up and put in work and when he had to lay out the crime scene in other words the way how he articulated it is something that uh, Kane could have never have put together. His his the psychology of that character would have never said that it needs to be done this way. Because even Tariq was like, "Well, why why you got to do it this way?" And he said, "Because it has to look like it was this." And he did it. He even even was able to assess that Tariq, you can't do this. You're not built for this. And like we haven't seen Drew in that fashion. We've seen Drew kind of be uncertain. 
but trusted by the family. But even maybe it's the confliction between him and his love and like trying to balance out, you know, the family duties and that. But I this is the most that, yeah. stone cold we've seen him. He was just like, this is the job. This is how it's to be done. By the boon. Only thing he couldn't do was move the body by himself. But like him setting up the scene, I thought like we may see more of Drew being used in his duty in the, in, in the, in the future. And again, I, I hate the comparisons because everyone loves to do this. But this is also why Tommy was so damn good because Tommy was the combination of both of these, of these characters, but more on a more sane level because like he can set up the scene. He was able to assess how to do it. He was the shooter. Like he did everything, but he just did in a way that, hey, by the way, Tommy should definitely have like a full blown out search party manhunt for him at this point. The way <laughs> how he was name dropped in court every second. I'm like, if Tommy, they, they keep on going back and forth with it. That's why it they they're they're painting him as the the killer, and at the same time, taking that paint right back away. It makes <laughs> it, 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 at, at, again at times when power get in courtrooms, it's it's like the worst Law and Order episodes ever. <laughs> like and there's no big revelations that happen. It's so straightforward. Dude from the DNC coughed. Do you not understand that that was him throwing a signal to do something? Who would have picked that up? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, come on. But um, with Drew, um, I think over the couple of episodes, we're actually, they are giving us great signals of why these two uh, sons, neither one of them can be the leader. Yeah. They're, they're, they're clearly painting that picture for you that neither one of them can be the leader. And but both of them are good at certain things. Mm -hmm. Drew, this was a great setup. When I, I laughed, I chuckled a little bit when he said, "Well, Tariq, you've never shot somebody before." He didn't understand the reason why Tariq looked that way from blood is because he thought about his father and then him killing his father. That's what the first thing that popped into his head. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Tariq wouldn't understand how to set it up, but he's shell shocked at that moment because the last person he seen get shot. Was his father, and Good point. It's from him shooting his father. Good point. So it just threw him off a little bit, but again, it just shows what Drew is good at. Drew is also, really the last time he held a gun, I mean, outside of his father, when he actually was like legitimately trying to kill somebody, was Ray Ray, and he was, you know, shaky hand Tariq. So hey, he damn near two for two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so he, I mean, it's those are good it's, averages. I think it's a good correlation just to bring that back to Tariq to see him being so shell shocked and understanding that this is part of the game that pinpoints why he's not his father. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of this is still something he does not want to be around. The drug game, clearly, he got, he has that on lockdown for some odd reason already this early in the game. But everything else that Jamie could do, he can't do. Yeah, And that's what it highlights that, okay, he's not this person. Kind of in reverse what we're seeing with the other family of the boys and it's being highlighted everything they can't do. Yeah, And the yeah. whole time we're looking like, well, the one who tends to make the smartest decisions so far is the daughter. Yeah, yeah. And and again, I think because the, the three of them have been kind of like baby their entire life and Tariq had to grow up really fast. So I think that, I mean, it, it's, think, on, it's on par why it's kind of imbalanced like that. But. Do you think it's that they were baby? Or do you think the person who should have been groomed can't be groomed? I don't think it's babying at this point. I I believe, I believe that uh, unfortunately in a hierarchy of male thinking at times, there's no way in hell I'm going to put my daughter as a leader of my organization. Yeah, I mean, of course not. You see how Lorenzo doesn't respect Monet. He constantly says that you are gonna, a woman. You're not a man. Get, we're going to get back to not respecting Monet because I have questions with her scene later on. But like, I think that that's the mistake that's possibly been made is that he, you're, you're, you're trying to decide between your two sons when your daughter is probably the best bet to run your yeah. organization. And... <laughs> I, I want to say this, uh, it was the same thing with Ghost of shielding his son by still wanting him to be something greater than he is. Yeah. But by it, the way, but by the way, why you right bring up Diana real quick? Why Diana do uh Kane girlfriend like that? <laughs> why 
she oh, tell her, hey, 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 I was looking at what she had on too. I was like, wait, that damn when she said, Oh, he <laughs> here because you can't afford anything you have on. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's, the, that's the best line tonight by far. <laughs> Oh man, let's that, not oh, no, that ain't the best line. That ain't the best line. Nah, oh. buddy. Okay. You we're not we're not passing up that uh I'm not a nigger line for, for oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, we we're going to and that. Tariq walking out, all right, nigga. We're going I to that. It. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I wish uh my man D from Three Back Geeks, the three back geeks, he definitely would have had something to say about the type of dude that dude hey, was. Hey, when, he, when he came and pulled his phone out and started taking I said oh. this. Hold on, dude. Hold on, hold on. We gotta come back to that. We will come in one second. I, let me knock on some of these sub characters real quick. Mm-hmm. I want to go to Piles real quick because we haven't seen since Power. Um, Piles was brought to court. Here's the thing about Piles. I know a lot of people are gonna get ready to bash her. I think that Tasha brought up the most important part about Piles um, in this episode is that she legit is a character that's just based on trauma. So her reactions, her as uh, um, her not being stable. Most mm-hmm. of the time is on par for that character. So for her to have been manipulated in this, for her to have been, um, you know, very emotional at times, to be confused, um, I, it makes sense. She mm-hmm. she is the person you want to bring it to court. And, you know, I'm going to follow it up with a question in a second. But, like, first of all, good to see Pauls because I think Pauls has definitely been a, one of those best, one of the really best supporting characters in Power Book because she did bring... Um, a, a extra a factor into the Jamie and Angela storyline, but I think her being in this right now, like I know people are going to bash her, but like again, you <laughs> have to remember that that character has just always been built on trauma. So her being in the courtroom, being confused, not understanding what's happening to her, her being easily peer pressured into things, it just makes sense for what that character is. With that being said. What, how would you assess Sack's day in court with Paul's being his key well, witness? Well, I said from the beginning, it's like the world's worst Law and Order episodes. Like, <laughs> it, it was clear what direction he needed to go into, and he did, which is self doubt. But he didn't go in with any evidence of anything, it was just mm-hmm. all her questioning everything that Tasha did for her. Yeah, and I want to say pause. Actually, well, she got rid of the phone. Remember when she got rid of the phone because she buried it with Angela? Um, it, it it was it was just too much of. Uh, let's show the fear of the DNC and mm-hmm. make him be a good attorney. When if you'd have just went straight forward and him understanding, like, hey, I need to paint this a certain way, where the people above me won't just fire me and put somebody else in here. And him go hard at her because it was clearly obvious that she said every, her whole thing was Jamie killed her sister. So mm-hmm. the moment we cut when we get to Tommy killed her sister and it comes from Tasha, put one and one together. How would Tasha even know who killed your sister? Wouldn't that make her the head of that organization? Your sister was a DA, right? So she killed your sister, a DA. Oh, okay, and. We have Tasha on file on trial for killing Jamie. Hmm. Don't you find that odd? And just ask those type of questions. He kind of got around to doing that, but it was because he was forced to do it. They need to stop showing Sax as being scared in the courtroom. When we know from all the seasons he's been on power, the one thing he ain't is scared to approach people that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't have too much to add to that, but I, I I did think that he did have an approach that seemed to have been the right approach until he got that cough signal. And <laughs> I mean, he just literally yanked the car off the road after that. Hey, and the moment he said, all, all, she, all it took for her to say, Jamie, he like. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> also, also, can we talk about how Tasha is supposed to you know at least for me like when you're on trial for you know murder, murder and you're overly emotional during the I was trial just, with the jury right there i yes. i have never seen somebody show so much emotion for the one that everything is being direct she, oh hey. and by the way did you see that uh did you see that uh one of the jurors the black lady who was giving all the emotion in the back yes he, <laughs> yes, yes. 
<laughs> hey, they got them a nice, nice extra, extra. That's <laughs> hey, she said, if I'm gonna be an extra, I'm going to be seen. Exactly. She was the red, she was I'm a black be seen, lady in a I'm red dress be... at the Republican convention. Yeah, like just agreeing with everything real hard. She yeah. just giving every every bit of emotion. But yeah, yeah it doesn't make sense because the, the last thing you do when you're on trial for anything is show outbursts of emotion because people automatically think you're guilty when it happens. So the moment Pa starts talking and we see Tasha lean in to David and you say, mm, and all that. And I'm like, what? A jury is right there looking at you. So wow for that. They they got to chill. That's got to be the worst. There's no, <laughs> there should be nothing in the script that says Tasha shows emotion. That should not be in there at all. And there should never, there should definitely not be a big block that says Tasha freestyles. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Never, never. She don't need to ever freestyle with her emotions in court. <laughs> she, need, she, she damn near need to put the invisible Murray J. Blige and, uh, uh, not going to cry shades on. Like You're supposed to, you're supposed to be looking straight ahead. Whatever, yeah. positive, whatever anyone is saying does not matter to you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Before we go on campus really quick, I definitely want to say something we talked about last week, and that's Monet and her character. The one thing I want to talk about this, uh, with her and this character is regardless of you know, her shooting DC Joe. I, can, I I know that actor from somewhere. I just cannot figure it out. But we got DC Joe, uh, DC Joe who answers to Rico, I'm pretty sure, who seems to be the distro. So we, we're, we're, I'm, I, the, I think these names are important because we may see, these, see this come about at some point. Also, I wonder if he's DC Joe because that's his name, or is he actually from DC? There's been a lot of people uh, uh, hitting that 95 for five minutes and ended up in New York, but we'll come back to that. And then there's obviously somebody named Bishop. So these are a few names that was name dropped in the organization. So we'll talk about that whenever they reoccur. But the thing about Monet is what we said last week. Monet is not a person who needs the entire story. She needs what the business is and done. So when it came down with Diana last week and the app, she says, is it making money? Good to go. Mm -hmm. Just like today, she says, you know, we're, you know, we're Kane at, okay, we good to go. He going to be there. We good to go. I don't even need to know all that. And I think that that shows, a, 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 I think that's a really, really significant as to why she's the leader because she's not trying to play the foot soldier She's not trying to play the street team. She's the boss. And when you, the boss wants to know, is the dollars counting? Are they stacking up? Is, is, is the business running? Bada boom. I don't care about all this little detail, what they wear, who they wear for. Is it, is, is, as long as the money's stacking up, that's all that matters. And I think that's like super dope that they, that they're portraying that in that way. Cause I, I, I think it would be corny. If she was just like, well, who came with? Why ain't you telling me? And like all that, you know, why why have that type of friction or tension with Diana when that's not even important? So like I think that if we continue to see that character in that fashion, I think like that is, I guess, a check in the box as to why she is the leader in case because there has been people kind of doubting why she is the one within a family. You had some people rooting for Kane for some reason, but to <laughs> each his own. But like I think this is that is a, a strong sign of leadership from Monet about how she handles that. And she wasn't afraid to talk, step up and talk to Lorenzo to th this episode. That's a change. So we'll see. I, I would say we're going to disagree on this one. Okay. Because uh, um, huh, her not caring exactly where Kane is, okay, because that's your son. Um, other times that she's been left in the dark about things, the way business run, granted, in the end, the money is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Anyone who mm, anyone who runs in this type of industry, um, if you are going to be the head or close to the head of the industry or the second in command to the head of the industry, you know it is your job to know how everything works below you. Because if shit stop moving, that don't mean a product has to stop moving. That, in fact, that does not mean a product can stop moving. So you need to learn how everything else works. And I think that is part of the issue I had, I have with the character so far, is that it feels like they're holding her back, and I'm confused why. And then this episode comes up, and I kind of see why. How is it that she is who she is, and she is running this organization, and just a regular nigga of the block have no respect for her name? That's weird. 
she said her name and he was like, oh, okay, so that should never be the case. True. And I'm wondering, like, why? Like, was it just uh, automatic to set up to make, you know, um, Tariq come in at that moment and things of that nature? But it doesn't make any sense for. It almost feels like the streets believe Kane is a person who runs that organization. I, I mean, it's from DC. That's going to be my only guess is that, you know. <laughs> but the point, the point she said, um, I know who you work for and I know what you think. But basically, get his ass on the phone, and we are gonna clear this up. That should have been the end of the conversation. Yeah, and because because you're a low, you're a low level guy. Once she names your boss and says, "Get your boss on the phone," and the name alone, because if you work for me, you're gonna know that name, and you're gonna know exactly who she is. Fair point. Fair the point. The point that you would know who she is if she said, "You better cut." Hey, that's it. You better Fair get point. on the phone and call me and let me know what's going on. I do agree. Like, yeah, so it was it was just it felt weird, but also it felt weird in the sense that it, I don't know again if the streets just believe that Kane is the complete muscle of the organization. So if something <laughs> happens to him, there's I, nothing to fear. I, I, but I'm that gonna... can't be the case because Lorenzo still wants <laughs> everything. I'm just gonna say that all some basic level street stuff is he probably like whoa. Kane is the flashy one. He got the nice car and he dressed good. He must be the one running it. I mean, I I, I, I don't he, got time. He, he a new fool. Yeah, I was Ain't gonna no say the hell you in that you in that business, and you don't hear the name of the top person and not understand that's the person that you don't fuck with. Like I don't got time right now, but like we <laughs> we you know where I'm coming from with this. Like you know that that stupid perception of like hey, oh, hey, that, I'm, that must- I am I am trying my best. Not to say certain things. Yeah. I'm just saying you should know certain things. Uh, Without yeah. go, giving personal experiences, why I say that. There's yeah. no way in the heck that should ever happen. Power power logic. <laughs> That's what it is. Power A. Hey, Co- Courtney got us again. It's power hey. logic. Bro. Hey, let's, he, let's... he came with a razor blade. Nick, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Yeah. I, I don't I... laugh his little ass. A razor blade? My man, uh, my man watched too maybe, many of them. Uh, maybe he was coming from DC. He couldn't, he couldn't carry across state lines. <laughs> he, he came with a razor blade. <laughs> Duh, man. Man, let's 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 step on campus real quick. And we got this hotep Malcolm dude comes from DC in a heartbeat, as always. He's not a hotep. Don't you disrespect hoteps. <laughs> No disrespect, hey, he is not a hotel. <laughs> D, D would have said that. I know it. I know yeah, it. He would have called him a hotel. He is not a hotel. <laughs> he is back what we used to call back in high school. I know some people may be offended. What I'm about to say is fine. You can be a little offended. And I remember growing up in high school, we used to call them Oreos. They black on the outside, but white on the inside. Yeah. That's all Malcolm is. He's an Oreo. <laughs> My man, like you said, my man, legit first reaction was to pull out his phone, take a picture or video with that. I absolutely hate people like that. So, like, when that's your first response, he got served the way he needed to. I'm man, Tariq, you right. This may be the best line of the of the episode. Hey, that's what they, that's Tariq definitely that's handled so that without a but, without a doubt. But um, if if I walk in on my girlfriend straddling another dude. Um, pulling out my phone ain't gonna be the first thing to pop in my head. Not at all. Not at all. But you know, my I'm, phone, not, my I'm not. I'm not saying anything that makes people think what I'm about to say is okay. It is not okay to do this to people at all. But I'd have snatched her ass up off of him so goddamn fast. Not not hurting, but snatch her off. We need to have a con- we mm-hmm. we're gonna have a a nice type of conversation. Me, you, and this little nigga that you ra- you straddling as I walk into the room. But for him to pull out his phone, I think it it moved deeper than just him being a sucker. I I imagine he's going to give this to her parents and say, hey, this is what she's doing in school. Oh, of course. Of course. Even though she just, you know, was in the top five of of, of scoring. For the scholarship. Yeah, for the scholarship. So, yeah, she's doing bad, right? But by the way, my man drove four hours. If anybody don't know, the the commute from D.C., to New York. New York is four for some change, and if it's traffic, it may be like five five to six. Yes. And he he's in school apparently. My man just be popping up. I got to say, 
this dude, <laughs> you can use all the words, but if, if you two don't filter them out, but you can use all the words in the comments below about how you describe this dude. I ain't gonna say it, but y'all know y'all already know what it is because he he yeah, he he on his, like Jabari's here. He's 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 steaming close on that one. Like my man made the four five hour trip <laughs> to pop up with his girl. Dur she, midday, midday. That means he left out his house at six o'clock in the morning. My man Tariq said exactly what I was saying. I bust out live. He said, "Wait, aren't you in school too?" <laughs> <laughs> he clearly isn't. He clearly isn't in school. Yeah, and he, got, and he keep on popping up there. Like, <laughs> if you're, what? What are you doing? Bash. Power, power travel, Joe. Power I'm travel. You, I'm telling you, DC and Power Universe, DC and New York are only 15 minutes away apart. So, so look, you know, make it. So look, I, I forgot what school Tariq was at, but when they said that they were having a Q party, first thing I was thinking about, I was like, oh, they about to have the bros up on <laughs> power? Okay, I wasn't the only one who... <laughs> I wasn't the only one when I heard Q party. That's hey. the first thing that came to my head. Hey, man, <laughs> shout out to the bros, man. My my, A lot of my good friends are, are Qs. And I'm saying, when they throw parties, they throw parties, man. Hey, we, stay, we used to be out on uh, on, on the Eastern Shore campus, man, getting busy. My, my boys... Down there, man. They 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 know how to throw a party. And I know there was not even a chance they were gonna have the oil and the and the cues out there and strolling on power. I knew that wasn't going down. So when I saw they say we're having a cue party, I was like, Oh, they about to get wild. And look, it was so funny because they were saying, Oh, there's about like, oh man, you go to them drinks. I'm like, oh, they might really have it until the line came out and said that Simon started it. I was like, oh, yeah, that, that ain't the cue party. <laughs> I don't know what that, it, it, another cue party popped into my head when they said Simon started it. I'm not going to say what it is because I like people and I don't want people yell at me. But it's a word that begins with Q. And when they said Simon started it and the dude held up. Oh, uh, uh -oh. I said, ah, OK, that's what a cue party is. Oh, Got it. <laughs> Man, but oh man, I guess I gotta exhort some of our time tonight and talking about Jabari. Man, look, this dude is a cold bitch, dog. Like, first of all, Listen. shout out to Carrie and all the therapy she's been getting done. I mean, look, all the fucking of Zeke because that's yeah, the only it, 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 <laughs> call it call it however you want. She done got her. She done got herself out of that situation with Jabari. Served him up a few times in this episode. Yeah, Zeke and Carrie doing her thing, and like. They laid out the situation of what it's going to be. And, like, we know Carrie had that really toxic relationship with Jabari that really was premised around, like, power and domination. And while she struggled through that, he preyed on her all the time and really manipulated her and chastised her in so many different ways. And we've seen him trying to pull those same cards this episode, and it wasn't going to work. Can I tell you how hard I laughed? When my man went back to his car and threw a hissy fit, <laughs> he was hey, he was hey. nice. He was big, big mad. I was like, hey. good. <laughs> he threw the food down, everything. He was just <laughs> let me tear this. I knew he was going for Tariq's car. And I said, I bet he's going right for Tariq's car to try to fuck him over. Like it's again, it is just showing that one that the character needs the control over her. Yeah, and I don't think I got it early on in this season that he needed to have control over her, but now that you see it, it's kind of scary of how far they can take this character. Because again, the actor is doing a great job of being yeah, yeah, no doubt. doing a great job no of doubt. playing a bitch ass nigga, and yeah. it ain't, it ain't easy to play a bitch ass nigga. Yeah, you gotta know. really commit to it, and he's committed full throttle to it, and. We got yeah. it from the beginning of the episode when he peeking around the corner <laughs> just staring at them as they're having a simple conversation. Yeah, he and he needs to reek as a threat, which is yeah. crazy because he also needs to reek to help finish his book. Thank so, you. Go ahead, get there. Man. De definitely he's about to get there. First of all, him being like the the one of the a spokespersons of Sex Week. All right, bro. And and then number two, you're going to try to do the little card thing with Tariq. And I'm glad that they brought this up because I was hoping we didn't have to reveal this to everybody on the show. But like also at the same time, while you're trying to put one up on Carrie, you're, you're also with your TA. So like I'm glad like they, they revealed that. Because I'm thinking about stuff like 
oh, so how quickly we forget, sir? Like, we, we already know. And, like, that's the one we saw. I'm sure this character had many more. Like, it just it fits his profile. By the way, you was a uh, team Jabari for two episodes. Just no, no, I just said, I no, no, no. I said, I understood the character. I still understand the character, and I understood how the character was pushing Tariq. That's clear. Now he's pushing him to finish his book. <laughs> the the fact the fact that he's so hurt instead of him wanting to hurt Tariq, this is this is this is how this is how big of a like um. Was I, I'll think of a word in a second, but like this is how manipulative he is to carry. He took a situation where he's mad at her, mad at Tariq, but more so mad at Tariq, and says, "I got something for you. I'm gonna help Tariq so he can get his thing, to get get the internship or the uh, the scholarship. But I'm gonna take his writing for my book take to care. weaponize it against Carrie yes. because he can't even write his own thing." But he getting somebody else to write something to mm-hmm. use it against him. And like Carrie's no fool. She knows his handwriting. She knows his writing style. Dude, I mean, come on now. It won't be long before we find out before he ends up getting uh uh expelled from school or suspended or fired, should I say, from school because of the idea of him using uh plagiarism. The one thing that you should never do in school that they uh, always tell you since day uh, one. Are we just turning in papers that's like we write them out in hand, then we turn in the handwritten paper? No. Tariq has to be typing these up, so he would still have something like, no, these are my ideas. These are my stories in his book. I don't I don't see how he thinks he's going to get away with that, but that's where people and, and desperate decisions. And just in case if anybody's ever applied for Indian for scholarship, it's definitely not between you and that professor it's going it's going it's going to the secretary oh it's going to the dean it's going to the financial aid office it's going to uh the, like the trust fund or whoever is above that there's multiple people that needs to make sure that this makes sense you know and and by the way each one of those levels you in all of a sudden <laughs> yeah yeah by the way here you go here's my paper here's your money sir <laughs> it's not a cash transaction on the ground so like it, it's it's crazy how he's self-destructing from all his common sense because of his hatred for Tariq. Like, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But, you know, we'll see. I, I don't think we're going to get much more Zeke and Carrie. I mean, they already established I, what that is. I think we are. I think we're going to, um, because that's a relationship that can self-destruct. And power loves relationships that can self-destruct. It yeah, really I think works. I think it would be forced at this point because they, they they both know what it is. And like when he was like, "I want you to meet my," aunt, I was like, "Well, that ain't good." But then she counteracted, was like, "This is not what that is." And so we know her, she knows what it is. He is doing what most young people do. He getting his feelings. Agree. So she may know and understand what it is. That doesn't mean Zeke is going to understand what it is. I yeah. think that's what the part that you can self-destruct whatever's going on with them two is based off of Zeke's reactions to stuff. Yeah. Who the hell is sleeping with someone and then says, I want you to meet my aunt. That's basically his aunt is his mother. Yeah. Like, he wants to take her home to his mom. Yeah, no doubt. That's, no. That, says, that says just how deep she's in. That should be the bellout point. Yeah. When you get that deep in the situation, you're like, oh, yep, it's time for me to go because I yeah. can't do this anymore. Fair point. Fair point. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously we, we haven't seen him get back on the court yet. Uh, and we know Jabari's still trying to figure out who it is. So like, oh, 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 oh. And, and obviously if you've seen by the preview for next week, he's totally he's stalking like, Tariq. He still thinks it's Tariq. He don't care which. Yeah, he's so, <laughs> yeah, dude, dude is out there. Dude is, dude is tripping. He and got like a boy vision for Tariq. He don't care then, about nobody and, else. And then I, like, I hate to say it, but Jabari may be slowly turning into sats because he sounds like he's about to be uh, uh, obsessed mm-hmm. With Tariq, like he done shifted the whole thing with Curry to the whole point of like, so what are you really doing? Like, what's really up with you? Why is that your business? You're my p- professor, but we'll, we'll talk about that next week. Let's <laughs> kind of go into um, let's, and while we're still on campus, let's talk about Tar- Tariq, Braden, and unless this is me being an idiot, I didn't even know Riley was in school. Was there ever an indication that she was in school at all? Not at that school. <laughs> <laughs> like I have not, they've they've really not talked much. Never seen a book bag or any oh, hair. Talk about it. Asked her to do something, and then she's in school now. Yeah. 
it's amazing how things change. I do like the way they tied it all together, though, from the party to now. Yeah, I definitely have that right in my notes. Like, I love how it all came full circle. Yeah. And he didn't even tell her about. I, so that's what I was going to ask you. Why didn't Tariq tell Brayden about sex? How much information does Brayden already know about sex? I don't think any. Because he didn't even know anything. anything about the Tejada thing. and But he exposed that. So why wouldn't he tell him about sex and rally? Sex. Sax would expose why his mother's at trial and then the father. And oh, because he is him. hiding that. Because that's why he got yeah. the phone. Got you. Got yeah. He but doesn't he's... want him to know too much stuff. Yeah. But even if he was to say, like, yo, you know, Riley, uh, Sax is it's yeah, a fan. Yeah, what, what makes you think that's going to stop Brayden? He needed he needed to break Brayden's heart. I the get way, it. The way Ghost used to do with Tommy. Like, I need yeah. to break your heart. Yeah. And, and two things with that. I totally agree. That that wouldn't have been, you know, the, the the final say all thing. But I still think you should know, just like he told everything about the Tejada family. But yes, this this is absolutely everybody. The first time you hear here on this show that this is Braden's <laughs> first comparison to Tommy. Yep, <laughs> that's it. This is the it's, first ta- Tommy quality of all. When it comes to love, stupid, both of them. Hey, the moment he said, "I don't believe you." I'm like, oh, you! What is with you, power black white boys and these women? Y'all fall head over heels for them. He was so in love, but again, I think Tariq did a great callback from the moment when uh, Chase told him, and whatever freaky stuff you all got going on, Tariq knew then, like, ah, back pocket. Let me use this when I need to, and then it came up, and he was like, perfect. She tried to hook up with me. I don't believe you. Well, Chase was there. He saw it. Randomly, Brayden runs into Chase. And nah, I would believe him there, bro. She did. I was, I saw it. That's it. And then she goes to telling the actual truth, kind of, sort of. And at that point, he's not going to believe you because his brother yeah. is saying that you was hitting on Tariq. Tariq is saying you was hitting on Tariq. She's not going to then believe that the brother was hitting on you. Like, yeah. At that point. He's, he automatically sees you as a liar. And he did never mention that. Well, I, he still hasn't figured out that he was drugged, but I guess because... No, she rep- told him. No, no. Huh? She told... you Who was drugged? Tariq? Tariq doesn't know he was drugged. Yeah, Riley told him. Nah. Said, nah. nah. She said, uh, I slipped in, in there. She said, I didn't mean it was you. Yeah. She told him last episode he was drugged. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm she sorry. Did. Yeah. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. Tariq didn't reveal to Brayden that he was drugged. No. Which, which I. The, yes. That's the part he has not revealed. That, that's why I'm like, what? But I, but to bring this all full circle, everything is full circle except for one thing. And that's the connection between well, what did you do for the rest of the night, Tariq? And that's the whole mm-hmm. question of Tasha saying, well, how would they know? And he's going to have to p- puzzle this out. I don't like this, like this little tip tidbit storyline that's going on but like it is significant and like it is what it is but like we all know at some point he's going to have to realize hey, like we, what to we do to like the from the beginning when oh, he, it, was, it was trash just when he know, went home and changed into changed a suit and we to, <laughs> like we, we didn't like that from the beginning i'm not going to say power had bad editing but i could imagine that could have been something where it was just like you know what let's just leave it in he was high out his mind it but, changed but he didn't he went, get no food or nothing. He went yeah. and changed. Clothes. He went and put on a suit to go to his father's gravesite. Has him. Come on, son. Come on. Jeez. Now. All right, man. So what's your what's your what's your thoughts about the ending here? Pause and Tasha having that moment. Uh, I'm just gonna go off the limb and say, like, it didn't make sense to me. I mean, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> it wasn't like the big like ending that typical uh, endings of this show have. It was I I, I think that it, it just it wasn't a correct ending. It wasn't, I'm sorry, it wasn't an impactful ending that we're accustomed to. The big the, ending that we thought yeah, we, it, we were beginning from this episode. Right, because they were getting an understanding of each other. And we are seeing how, again, like, Paul's definitely, as Tasha said, if anybody suffered as much as she did, it was her. And and I, I do agree, but Paul's definitely suffered a lot. And they were drawing a parallel. And then it it went to the whole... I, I, I I guess Paz is trying to say, like, she did it. I mean, you didn't do it, but you know who did. Like, I don't see how yeah. that 
made that turn. And, and, and of course, I will always give Paul's the benefit of the doubt is that her emotions are all over the place. So that reaction seems to be on par for her. But like, I don't see why that was the ending. I would have loved Tasha to have just answered immediately with saying like, whatever or whatever it may have been but it just it, you know whatever and just, and back to just to remind people that tasha's on 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 in trial for her life because her son yeah mm-hmm. it's just, and it's just again about tasha uh protecting Tariq. that's it that's and it i think they gave you the impactful ending part in the scenes beforehand and that was the end with monet and kane and her with lorenzo like that was the impactful ending that if the episode ends there that then we have way more questions about going into next week yeah but ending it here both brings different questions about well we know how far she's willing to go to protect Tariq, but now that protection is starting to break down yeah what's yeah. going to be tasha's next move yeah yeah. Well, that's all I got for tonight's episode. We, you know, we're back. I, like each we something. I don't know who. Come on. Let me know something. We talked about Sax. We talked about Davis. We talked about, I don't know. I felt like it's somebody here that we should be still talking about. I don't know. I mean, okay. We, I mean, I'll just go down Curry. really quickly. We talked I mean, about Carrie. You know, talk- I may, I may be tripping. I'm yeah. just going to say that I could be tripping. Yeah, and Lauren, there's nothing to make with Lauren. I mean, Lauren, you, you, if you want to talk about the Lauren and and oh, Tariq, no. then, yeah, that that was nothing to really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt like it was something else with Monet, but I I don't know. I can't remember. Monet, oh, I mean, it's one more thing. I need someone to be able to explain to me how uh, Kane gets out of jail from Rodriguez. I'm saying his name right, Ramirez. Ramirez. I'm sorry, I get Ramirez. And he then tells Ramirez, uh, Monet is trying to push us out and replace us. But Ramirez knows who he works for. It ain't Monet. <laughs> <laughs> so what angle are we playing with him even caring who Tariq is? Because he's I... not going to step up and think Monet is pushing Kane out and think he's going to do something. And then Lorenzo say, are you messing with my money and I'm going to kill you and your family? I do his pussy whip. So Ramirez is completely irrelevant right now. He knows who he's worth for and he knows how he's in there. So like nothing, absolutely nothing. He can add Big Mad all he wants. And that lasted for about a, one third of this episode. So that's not what Kane would bring it up to him like that for. Yeah, that's because it's right on par with his character. The dude is completely losing his nuts because like he doesn't know where his position is at now. So he's doing desperate things thinking like oh i got i'm gonna get her back for this and whatever like it doesn't make sense first of all uh, two two questions too like are they is everybody running burner phones and why do no one text and code everyone's just being blatant on what and <laughs> my man my man was my man was in jail and called them on their phone all willy-dilly I, i'm sorry i'm just a little confused sorry, we have a police hookup Nigga, why are you calling anybody but your hookup? Or, or why aren't you just asking for him? Why wouldn't he be, just be there <laughs> at the precinct? It's a different precinct. I'm gonna take it. That's why I took it. It's a different because he hit he hit uh, a church in uh, out of town city out of whatever city they're in out of Queens. Okay, because that's the only way it would make sense for him to be arrested and nobody know about it. Okay, just hey, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Hey, I was, I had, I had questions too, and <laughs> it's the answers that I came up with. It. Okay, I'll, I'll so just he's going to another section of New York that no one knows about. <laughs> I'll just I'm go pretty sure that. Lorenzo doesn't just have one cop on his payroll. <laughs> yeah, because like, t- <laughs> like Tariq said, they're all working for us. Well, but but okay, flex, <laughs> stun on them out, here. dude. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, yeah, that's 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 all I got for tonight. I think that's all we got for tonight. Yeah. yeah. So we're back. Episode eight, each eight, each and every week uh, covering Powerball 2. Folks, let us know in the comments what you thought about tonight's episode. Let us know what you thought about our thoughts of tonight's episode. And if you are still Team Jabari by some reason and Team Kane, uh, please plead your case down below because I need answers. I a paragraph about Kane. You can get that paragraph of okay. You know it. You know it. But as always, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you all next week.